Welcome back to Mental Math. This problem seems simple, but it contains one of the most common traps in algebra. Your intuition might lead you straight to the wrong answer. We're going to dismantle this trap and show you the rigorous way to solve it. First, let's look at the method that seems correct, but is actually flawed. We all learn the product rule for square roots which states that the square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of a times b. So the temptation is to apply this rule directly to our problem. This would mean multiplying negative 4 and negative 9 inside the square root. Negative 4 times negative 9 is positive 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. This seems logical, but it is completely wrong. We have broken a fundamental rule of mathematics. The product rule for square roots has a critical condition. It is only valid if at least one of the numbers, a or b, is non-negative. It fails when both are negative, which is exactly the case in our problem. To solve this correctly, we must first introduce the imaginary unit, i. The imaginary unit i is defined as the square root of negative 1. This is the foundation for working with square roots of all negative numbers. Let's re-examine our expression. The correct approach is to simplify each term using i before we multiply. Let's start with the square root of negative 4. We can rewrite negative 4 as 4 times negative 1. Now, since 4 is positive, we can safely use the product rule to split the square root. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So, the square root of negative 4 simplifies to 2i. Next, we do the same for the square root of negative 9. Following the same process, the square root of negative 9 simplifies to 3i. Now we can substitute these simplified forms back into our original expression. We multiply the numbers and the i's separately. This gives us 6 times i squared. What is i squared? From the definition of i, we know that if i is the square root of negative 1, then i squared must be negative 1. This is a fundamental identity in complex numbers. So we substitute negative 1 for i squared in our expression. And we arrive at our final correct answer, negative 6. Let's summarize the key takeaway. The correct answer is negative 6. The incorrect answer, obtained by breaking the product rule, is positive 6. The moral of the story, when multiplying square roots of negative numbers, always convert to i first. This will prevent you from falling into this classic trap. Thanks for watching. The imaginary unit I is your key to handling negative square roots correctly. If you enjoyed seeing how a simple looking problem can hide a mathematical trap, hit that like button and subscribe for more insights that keep you from falling into common algebra pitfalls. See you next time.